Hey guys, welcome to episode 2 of the brand new Nottingham Forest career mode here on FIFA 22. We're in the Premier League, we're mid-bloody table in the Premier League, and I'm sure Forest fans in real life, if I was to offer you 13th in the Prem come the end of this upcoming real life season, you'd very much take it. The squad definitely needs some improvements. They've had a confirmed signing since we've released episode 1. <laughs> the first episode premiered yesterday, and our... Uh, the premiere finished, I went to Twitter, and Forrest announced the signing. Perfect timing. So we will get that signing in today. Thank you for all of your feedback yesterday. Very much appreciate it. Please do keep that coming in the comment section down below. Make sure you're continuing to hit the thumbs up on the videos as well. It really helps push the content to new people and helps the channel grow. And it's very kind of you to continue to do so. I am also making a number of other changes as well, including a formation change. He said that uh, the manager in real life prefers a three-back. So I am going to try it. I am usually awful with three-backs, but I will give it a go. I'll give it a go. We'll see how we get on with it. By doing so, I'm dropping Yates to centre-back, which is, I'm told, where he plays in real life. And uh, we're going to try and train Cook as a centre-mid, make him that box-to-box -box player. Because his stats tend to suit that, rather than make him a little bit too much... A little bit too defensive. I brought Joe Lolly into Cam ahead of Ayeda, who now drops into that centre mid role because of this formation. And then we've got Johnson and Mighton out wide. Lewis Graben gets the nod up top as the striker alongside Taiwo. Because, well, Graben was brilliant in the cup against Preston, and hopefully he can continue to be so in the league as well. We have a number of new names, new names added to the shortlist as per your feedback, including Joe Roden. Including Lewis O'Brien, Joe Rebo, Keenan Davis, Gonzalo Ramos, and Luca Oyen. So they're all in the potential column. In the Forest have done it in real life, so we're going to do it in save column. Julian Biancone, we are going to sign now. We can get the deal done, and he will join us on January the 1st. We don't have to wait till the window to actually negotiate the deal. And I'm not sure, I didn't check the articles to see what the price actually was, but that is a minimal fee for a player that certainly would do a role anywhere in the back line. His jumping's not great at 65, but he is six foot two. He's not rapid, but he does have 76 sprint speed. So it's probably going to be good at right back or left back and probably going to be good at centre back as well. He's an all rounder. Four star weak foot is really nice too. What's he on a weak weight? wage wise 6,800 you imagine coming to the Premier League is going to want a bit of a wage boost I'm quite happy to give him that I'd only offer him rotation though I was kind of expecting him to maybe say he wanted important I can quite happily throw him into the starting lineup in the four back formation but in the five back at the minute I don't think I've got room for him as it stands he's asked for 22 grand a week which in Premier League terms is not much at all but we will try and get him down a little bit if he's happy to. And they are happy to sign for £18,000 a week. Julian Biancone is in. Now, Musa Niakate is supposedly imminent as a Forest signing. I won't do it yet. But it's not far away by the looks of things. And as soon as it's announced in real life, I'll do it in the very next episode and we'll get him in. Meaning that the suggestion of Joe Roden, Levi Colwell as well... Probably not going to get utilised because I'm just going to end up with so many centre-backs. Playing three-back, I oh, might need some more. But we do have some decent young talent as well, including Umbe So and Panzo, who would actually quite like to get some first-team football. We've got five centre-backs that are in their early 20s. Actually, I'm not sure how old Yates is. Yates only 23, McKenna and Worrell are 24, Umbe So's 20, Panzo's 20. That's five under 25 centre backs. I don't need any more. I really, I really genuinely don't. So we'll we'll see how we get on with this three back formation. I can't promise it's going to be amazing, but I'll give it a damn good go. Arsenal in the first game. The general consensus from YouTube comments and from Twitch chat was that we still continue to sim the big six in this first season. So that's what we will look to do. We got a win against Liverpool. We got a defeat against Manchester City. We've gone to the Etihad. No, we haven't gone to the Etihad. We've gone to the Emirates. And we've won 3-2 away from home against Arsenal. Yates, Lolly and Taiwo on the score sheet. Seemingly, we're not that bad for simmed games. For the rest of the episode, it's Bournemouth at home. 
Brentford at home in the cup and Everton away, a trip to Goodison Park on the horizon. We'll wait and see what some of those other scout reports come back as and I will show you them when they do. Uh, and I have added some youth scouts as per your feedback as well. There was a call to send someone to South Africa. We've done that. Just so happens that we had a Greek youth scout that I'd hired that was five star, five star. Just so happens that the owner of the club in real life is Greek and that Forrest do tend to sign a number of Greek players. So I sent him to Greece. And then we've got Lars van der Veen, the Dutch scout scouting in England. Not necessarily prioritizing any particular position or style of player, just seeing what's about and we'll see uh, who potentially becomes available. But for now, I'm going to advance further then on towards that game in the league upcoming next. And then, fingers crossed, against Bournemouth, the side that came up with Forrest from the league below, of course, last season. They managed to finish second in the league behind Fulham and get automatic promotion, whereas Forrest did it the hard way through the playoffs. Let's see if we can't beat a side that, well, we should very much be competing with, considering... They came up from the division we were in last year. Let's see what we can do. Again, please drop the video a like. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on more. And fingers crossed. Lewis Wack grabbing ways demands. You're telling me to give him a contract? He's putting a con... Actually, no, it doesn't say transfer request. Can I now negotiate a contract with him? I can. Before, it said he'd put in a transfer request. Now I've put him in the starting lineup in a 3 4 1 2. He's played a game from the off and now he's removed that transfer request. Okay, I'll get it done then. We'll delegate. He's on 36. To be fair, 42 is not that much of a jump, to be honest. Will you sign it? You will. Good. Well, that's Lewis Graben happy. That should hopefully affect, positively affect the morale in the squad, which is already pretty decent. Stop you waffling, Chez. Go and play Bournemouth. For our loan agreement, he's going to join RZ on a loan. Fantastic. Scout report on Joe Roden, 72 rated, would be decent, but like I say, I've got a number of young centre-backs already, so I'm going to call any interest there. Now, Lewis O'Brien did look decent, 72 rated, physically looks actually pretty decent, and technically looks like a good all-rounder as well. That could be a goer for us, you know. Lewis O'Brien does look pretty good and would be an improvement on everybody we have in that role currently. So that could be something that I'd be very keen on getting done relatively soonish. We'll wait and see what Joe Aribo looks like. To be fair, I might sign them both because we do have a lack of genuine quality in that central midfield position. We've got some bodies like Cafu, like Colback, but Colback's 31 now. Cafu, whilst he's 28, isn't super old, but isn't super great. I'd rather re replace Cafu and Colback with perhaps Aribo and O'Brien. That would probably be a really good idea. Fornar's going to go out on loan as well and hopefully get some good experience. The side looks like it might be coming together. Bournemouth so far this season, rock bottom. They've played four. They've picked up a single point. Fulham are the same. We are the best performing newly promoted side thus far. Although, of course, after my one played game in the Premier League yesterday, I'm yet to pick up a point with the team. Let's go and change that. 4-3-3 for Bournemouth then. Mark Travers in goal. Fredericks, Nathaniel Phillips, Lloyd Kelly and Adam Smith. Jefferson Lerma holding with Philip Billing and Jesse Lingard at Cam. Then Ryan Christie on the right, Todd Cantwell on the left and Dominic Solanke through the middle. The battle of the promoted sides. Lewis Grabwin was very good against Preston, a side that was in the championship last year and is in the championship this year. But Bournemouth are a different test. This formation is going to be intriguing for me. I'm so used to playing four backs that I don't know how a three back plays. We might really adjust to it super quickly and have a great old time. Or it might be a struggle. I don't think it's going to go any other way than really well or really badly. So hopefully it's the former, not the latter. And we'll actually be able to get a decent result here. Playing the ball back quite nicely early. And Awani is in here, trying to get the turn in, but just not quite as agile as I hoped he would be and as he needed to be in that situation to get the shot away. I do like to get the ball out wide and then work it, but they are keeping Alex Mighton and Brennan Johnson very tightly marked in these early stages. And I'm finding it difficult to play my usual way and get the ball out wide and then work something. That's not gone well at all. Todd Cantwell intercepts and Philip Billing will get it forward here to Dom Solanke. Now, my worry with a three-back is that I will pull a centre-back out of position to deal with a run 
and then be short on numbers in the middle. Is he onside there again, Dom Solanke? He is this time, but not able to create the chance. Johnston finds Taiwo. Uh, again, not as agile as he needs to be. And strength there, I thought, was one of his strong suits. Dean Henderson makes the save, does he? Yes, he does. I'm sure Taiwo's got great strength. He's supposed to. 83 strength. He's not showing it so far, Taiwo Awaniwi. Awaniwi. He's scoring well in simmed games, but I haven't clicked with him yet in a played one. But this is only the second play game I've used him in, so there's plenty of time still for me to adjust. There's a bit of space here for Ryan Christie, and Dean Henderson again makes the save, which is more than he did against Leicester yesterday, so I have to be happy enough that he's at least just stopping it to start with. And Lewis Graben is slow as balls, but thankfully does get to the ball this time around. I hate it. Tyro looking for the run of Brennan Johnson, who's in behind. He might turn provider here. Tyro our knee, and he does. Goal scorer in the Premier League, Brennan Johnson at the City Ground. Lovely ball through the gap by Taiwo, turning provider and giving us the advantage here in our first home game in the league. Or is it our second? Was Leicester at home yesterday? Regardless, my first goal in the league in a played game. Not sure about the keeper there, though. Oh, Mr. Travers. I think he perhaps expected me to go right into the top corner. And he's done that awkward. I'm going to save it or I'm going to move my arm out of the way animation. Which isn't great, but it's worked in our favour this time. So we'll take it. If that happens against me, expect me to lose my top. Lerma. Lingard. Nice interception. And McKenna turns well. Look at that press from Bournemouth. Jeez, that's going to be hard to deal with if they keep that up for the full game. Cook has some good strength there. Are you onside, Tyro? He was, you know. And he's showing a little bit of agility there. And now Joe Lolly can race away. And look at Alex Miter making a lovely run. Oh, the pass isn't great. The finish was half decent. So was the save. Travers stops it before it finds its way into the back of the net for a second time. Scott McKenna's up here. Nathaniel Phillips wins the second header. Cook should win this. It's Joe Worrell. I keep getting Cook and Worrell mixed up with their blonde hair. Joe Worrell is shock blonde. Whereas Tyler Cook is just a little bit blonde. I am getting worried here about their press. But we've managed to get it away, and I've got bodies around me. And this could open up still. Cook looking for Lewis Graben. He gets there first, despite being about half a yard short of pace. Ayeda! Travers is not covering himself in glory here. Nottingham Forest 2, Bournemouth nil before half time. Ayeda this time, the man that finds the back of the net. And again, wasn't necessarily right in the corner. Could, but, oh, it definitely should have been saved by the keeper. That one's right down his throat. Again, is it that awkward? I'm going to save it. No, I'm not animation. I don't know what that was. That might one, that one might be awkward because it's right above his head and you're not like reaching up for it and it's just kind of ah, trying to get my hands to it. I'm not sure. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt on that occasion, but certainly the first one, he should have been better. I don't care, though, because we're 2-0 up. Maybe this 3-4-1-2... Is actually half decent, although we might need to test it against slightly better opposition to truly find out. Cantwell to Smith. Inside to Cantwell. I have just said so far defensively sound with this three back, so do expect me to concede a goal sooner rather than later. Taiwo showing some good strength. Lolly there. Forward to Mighton. Graben has the ball now. I need to go short before I can then go long. Brennan Johnson making a good run. Around the outside here is Tyler Cook. The youngster in behind. No! No third goal. Tyler Cook with a brilliant opportunity to seal the points, seal the deal, and he can't do it. Off the underside of the bar. Dom Solanke trying to go the other way as they look to actually score the third goal of this game at the other end, but Todd Cantwell's offside. It's with the pink. Brooks reacts to it. Lerma gets up as well. Lovely ball by Brooks. Put out a fantastic message recently on social media. Uh... David Brooks saying that he's recovering from the cancer that he's been suffering from. And he's helping Bournemouth recover from a 2-0 deficit here. It's now 2-1. They have a goal back. But let's not celebrate too wildly, shall we? And that's one thing I was worried about with the three back. Just not got enough numbers. It's the first time it's really caused me any sort of concern. But it's definitely something I need to monitor. Free kick for us. Worrell taken short. Cafu's just off the bench. Sam Surridge is also just off the bench as we try and hold on to this lead and maybe, maybe improve it. Surridge involved. Out wide here to Alex Mighton. I've since changed my wingers 
to stay back whilst attacking. We'll see if that works. This is a brilliant move. And we'll look to pull it back to Taiwo here, who unfortunately is very well marked by Phillips. And they might even keep this in. We might even keep this in. Solanke's done superbly. And David Brooks will look to get it forward. Just over 15 minutes to go. And we had a 2-0 lead against Preston and threw it away late on. Thankfully, still able to go through in the cup on penalties. Let's not do the same again, please, here against Bournemouth. There comes the press. God, you have to be ready for it, don't you? Otherwise, you're going to get really caught out. Johnson looking inside for Sam Surridge, looking to spin the defender. He's a bit clunky, Sam Surridge, in game. But finding Cafu here. And through there is Taiwo. It's going to fall free to Lolly. I couldn't get more fortunate, could I? Joe Lolly makes it 3-1. We are going to get a win in the Premier League. And it is, hopefully, going to be by two goals as well. I was trying to get it through to Tyra, who may well have just run offside when I played the pass. But Lolly reacts quickly to the ball that broke free and buries it nicely on his weak foot. 3-1. Nice ball out wide to Todd Cantwell. Back there to Solanke. Definitely got more bodies back now, don't I? Really feels like about five when defending with the... Wing is set to come back on defence. That might really give me a little bit more defensive solidity in this formation. Will definitely test their f stamina and how well they're going to be able to... Oh, he tried to duck out of the way and actually got the block on it. And that's going to be a handball in there and it's going to be our free kick. Definitely felt more defensively solid there. Like I had more numbers. Well, I definitely had. It was not even felt like I had more numbers. I did objectively have more numbers back. So that should hopefully keep us a little bit more solid defensively that's going to be the plan and i'll make that change permanent once we finish this game can we score one final goal lolly has brennan johnson out here on the right hand side and he's coming forward on the counter and we'll look for lolly again in the end went towards taiwo never mind a 3-1 win at the city ground against Bournemouth, proving that, yes, the league table doesn't lie. We are the best of the three promoted sides so far this season. Dean Henderson having to make a save. We had more chances, although only by a single one. City draw against Southampton. Liverpool draw against Crystal Palace. Maybe some of the big clubs' early doors aren't quite so uh, dominant as they might like to be. An offer from Brighton to loan Sam Surridge short term. And if we potentially want to sign Gonzalo Ramos in January, then that's certainly something I'd be open to. So I'm sorry, he's not in my first team picture. Neither Steve Cook, really, unfortunately. But he may well play in this next game against Brentford in the Cup. Join me there next. Fornar has agreed to go out on loan to RZ. That's for two years. Scout reports back on Luca Oyen, Gonzalo Ramos, and a couple of others as well. Luca Oyen looks... Physically, all right, although low on strength, but technically <sighs> needs work. Very much so needs work. Might not be the finished article yet. Gonzalo Ramos at 75 rated and physically and technically better than anyone else we have in that position. That is definitely someone I'd like to perhaps bring in in January. Joe Aribo looks very good too at 74 rated and only £5 million. I think we found our two central midfield options in O'Brien and Joe Aribo. Certainly keen on bringing those two in. And at striker, Gonzalo Ramos seems like a no-brainer as well. We'll wait and see if Niakate gets signed IRL. I'll just hold off for now. See, we're not going to be able to get anyone in in the next couple of episodes anyway. We'll wait and see if Forrest signs someone else IRL. If they do then we'll sign them instead. If they don't, then I think we have our transfer targets lined up. Right, I'm going to make sure that Brentford are putting out their correct side. We'll play the four-back this time around. You notice that Dean Henderson's already grown to 81 rated. And we'll play a couple of fringe players and maybe go one more in the Carabao Cup. Brentford also with a 4-3-3. Their starting lineup looks very similar to the one that we used last year in this exact save, the updated transfers, players in the Premier League save, or teams in the Premier League save. We used Brentford last year. The shirt is there. And my lineup was Raya, Roeslu, Ayer, Pinnock, Henry, Nurgar, Jensen, De Silva, and Bermo, Tony Canos, I think. I think that is my starting 11 from last year. Pretty sure. Number of options on the bench as well, but you see how we're lined up. There's Ande Silva in again. Lewis Graben gets the nod after his heroics. 
against Preston in the previous round. Cafu came off the bench and impressed in the last game. And the back four looks solid enough. Panzo's grown, has a, as has Umbe So, which is good news. And Henderson's up to 81 as well. I should have put Bryce Samba in. It's the one change I didn't do. But Bryce looks like he's going to be leaving us anyway, so we won't be too disappointed about that. With regards to Dean Henderson and the fact that we have him permanently and not on loan, I'm not sure what to do. I'll take your feedback on it in the comments section. Do I finish this first season with him and then look to sell or loan him out? Or do I just keep him and play him? The decision is yours. You guys can dictate what happens transfer-wise in that regard. As To be fair, you guys dictate most of what happens transfer-wise in all of my saves. But at the minute, Dean Henderson is one of the ones I'm really not sure what to do. So I really could do with that feedback, if you don't mind. Josh De Silva, he was brilliant for me in that Brentford save last year. Absolutely superb. Grew to like 85 rated, I think, in the end. Wonderful player. Brian and Burmo was okay. He's certainly getting involved here. And here's Jensen. This is basically a precursor for the game that will be played in the Premier League at some point this season. Can I get to that with a defender? No, because we've come together, Loic and Beso and Ivan Tony. Tony's crumbled. I'm trying to step in there to block a potential shot, but he has lunged. It's probably a penalty. And Ivan Tony is a bit of a specialist in these conditions. He normally goes down to that bottom left-hand side, as he has done this time, as we've read it, Dean Henderson makes the save. No goal this time, Ivan. Thank you very much. Ball down the line to Mbermo. And Matthias Jensen. That's a great ball. Ivan Tony. And Beso is a little bit cautious now, being on that yellow card, but Panzo steps in nicely there to intercept that. Lewis Graben's link-up play is decent. And, ah, Brennan Johnson was offside. As I was playing, I was like, your brain goes, I shouldn't do this, but then still presses the buttons. Can we get in there? Well done, Drager. That's nicely intercepted. They're coming for me, though, but we're not to be perturbed by a press, and Larea can't get that forward, but he'll try again. And he does this time. Zande Silva, Lewis Graben, around the corner, poor pass. Very nearly cutting open this Brentford back line, but not yet. They're cutting me open instead. Here's Josh De Silva. Does he have the option how wide he does? Here it is in Sergi Canos. Back to Josh De Silva. Oh, he's going to squeeze the ball off. And Henderson, despite his best efforts, can't keep it out. Brian and Burmo buries it. And Brentford lead by a goal to nil. Goal line technology needed. It did look like it was very close. But certainly over the line. We trail in the Carabao Cup by a matter of millimetres. Tony. It's a slick from Brentford. Canos back to the silver, into the middle. Little dummy, that sold me. No! Oh. We had a bit of fortune in the last game. Brentford have gotten that fortune in this one. Matthias Jensen scores a second for the Bees, but they really are lucky. It's a nice dummy, to be fair, from him here. Really nice dummy. I get two blocks on it. Block on the first one, comes back to them. Sets up Jensen, get a good enough block on he's kind of hit his shin and his toes at the same time it just bundles its way past Dean Henderson who can't react in time unfortunately we trail by two now here <sighs> in the Carabao Cup I have made a change at half time to bring Taiwo on up top and hopefully our knee can make the difference in this second half but his task just got twice as hard to Johnson like the run out wide really like the run out wide we will use it oh it was meant for was meant for the man out wide. A hater looking for Brennan Johnson. Across looking for Tyler. Maybe I should have taken the shot. Now we're in trouble on the counter attack going the other way. We seem to either get decent victories or convincing defeats in this save so far, don't we? Although the Leicester one was a bit more resounding than this one. Leicester, I didn't really have much of a look in in that game. Brentford, we certainly have been better in this fixture. But unfortunately, not getting a better result. Thankfully, it's in the cup, not the league. And we'll look to get payback in the league. But unfortunately for those fringe players, they are losing the opportunity of getting some football in cup competition, at least until the FA Cup comes around in January. Back to first loot. Zande Silver in the way. Larea can't get rid of it. Panzo intercepts that nicely. Cook. 
bundled it forward there to Taiwo. And Lolly, can he time this right? Yes, he can. Come on, Brennan, you're in, son. Brennan Johnson away from the defenders. Buries it. Reducing the arrears indeed, Derek Ray. Just as Bournemouth did to us, it's 2-0 to 2-1. Let's make sure that it's a Forest goal for the fourth, if there's to be one. Can we do what Preston did? I'm trying to play that round the corner towards him. He'll get there first, and we'll poke it for Taiwo, who could be in here. And he is Taiwo Awanee. Brilliant save by David Raya. Trying to chase after it with Taiwo, but I can't get there. It felt like he didn't want to sprint after that at all. That's probably, or is it? Going to be the last chance we have. Oh, if that pass makes it through, maybe we have one more. Not quite. It's just not quite going to be our day. That heavy touch from Dervisholi we will step in on. And maybe we can get a late equaliser, just as Preston did. Cafu, Taiwo. Lolly is an option. Man out wide. Zande Silva offside there. Larea will deliver a ball. It's decent. Oh, what a touch from Christopher Ayer. Game-saving interception from the centre-back. And there is to be no second goal, unfortunately. Oh, we got so unlucky with the first, with the second goal that they had. But to be fair, look, look at the stats. Two shots for me, seven shots for them. And that probably sums up why we're out and they're through. Fair play to them. We've got Everton next, who just pumped Pompey by five goals to one. So they're certainly giving me in good spirits. We... Are in a lofty seventh, I think that was in the league. There it was indeed. It's probably not going to last for long, but we'll switch back to the switch back to the three four two one, and we'll go again in the Premier League. This time, Goodison Park and Everton are in third and having a very bright start to the season. Four three three seems to be the formation of choice for everybody else so far today. Jordan Pickford in goal, Seamus Coleman, Michael Keane, a new signing from Burnley, James Tarkovsky, in at centre back alongside Vitaly Mikolenko. Alan Ducouré and Deli Ali in the midfield with Andros Townsend, Demarai Gray and Calvert-Lewin up top through the middle. We are as we were in the first game in the league. Although this certainly is a sterner test than Bournemouth. You'll have noticed that Tyler Cook is up to 70 rated. Made the permanent change to set my wingers to track back on defence. And hopefully that will help us be a little bit firmer defensively throughout the course of the rest of this save. But Everton are definitely a more difficult test than Bournemouth. Even more so away from home. Nicely intercepted there by McKenna though. And he'll look to get away from Calvert-Lewin here. It's bobbled free. And his attempted pass goes straight to the Everton man as well. Not getting too much luck with some of my passing in this game. We intercept that. No. Can Demarai Gray finish? Not even close. Skied well over the top. Well, that was entirely unnecessary. A yellow card for Dominic Calvert Lewin. I thought he might have been getting a red there. That was just absolutely needless from the England striker. Oh, just not got that clinical pass at the minute, have we? The opportunities are opening up to potentially play someone through, but the passes aren't coming. Here's Mikolenko. Inside there to Deli Alley. Hader can't quite get there. Calvert Lewin with some space. He's wound up, but he's not going to get the shot past the defender. Lewis Graben won that header well. Won that header well, and Lolly will get it away. McKenna has the option down the line, but they've stepped in the same way that we have a couple of times. On oh, Demarai Gray's on his own out here, forcing him wide though. Good defending. Little back heel to Mikolenko. Still danger. Still danger. Binding up Demarai Gray again. I want to call him Andre for a second time. And Abdullah Dekure fires just wide. Everton are knocking on the door here. Demarai Gray, Mikolenko. Back to Gray. This is good. Deli Ali. There's... Oh, Calvert-Lewin, who surely should have put the Toffees 1-0 up. I don't know how he's missed that. I genuinely don't know how he's missed that. That has to be 1-0 Everton. There is no excuse from a striker of his calibre, or really any striker of any calibre, for missing that chance. Everton dangerous here. Really dangerous. Seamus Coleman gets past me. Trying to get the ball off him. It's a sharp turn. Oh, this is really looking like it's going to be an Everton goal, and they can't get much closer than they've been coming, can they? Abdullah Dekore, Deli Ali, and Andros Town... Not... Abdullah Dekore, Deli Ali and Dominic Calvert-Lewin all with 
glorious chances to give them a 1-0 lead. Andros Townsend now comes off for them and Alex Iwobi is on. Maybe he has the quality to find the breakthrough in this game. Great. Oh, the ball roll. Ever my nemesis. Thankfully, the finish is awful. And the danger has passed. Here me. That's turned by Alex Mighton. Lolly quickly forward. It's not great, though, is it? Really not a good pass at all. Look for the run that Alex Iwobi's making. He's onside. And McKenna steps in. Really important. Lewis grabbing around the corner here to Taiwo. Looking up wide for Nuno da Costa. Trying to utilise that pace out in a wide area. Now, can we dig a cross out? If I hit an arm, we will get a cross in late on. Definitely don't want Taiwo on it, though. Who's going to have the best crossing? Probably Lolly, to be honest, isn't it? Or maybe Alex Mighton. Let's give Alex Mighton it. Come on, then. I've got some really tall players back there. We're just going to float it. And hopefully get on the end of it. That came off Andre Gomez. It will be a corner. The chance is still there. Lolly will deliver. Come on, then. Chance. Tyro's up. Tarkovsky's up. Get there quickly. Nuno da Costa from range. A long way out, a long way over. It's going to be a nil-nil draw against Everton. And given the nature of the amount of chances they have had, I think we can count ourselves lucky that we've even gotten a point, let alone the clean sheet that's going to come with that point. I don't really know how we haven't conceded in that game, but very pleased to come away with something from Goodison Park. That's another point towards safety. They all count. Only the one shot in the game, which was that one from distance from Nuno da Costa. Not very creative in the last two games, were we, against Brentford and Everton. We're going to have to step that up if we're to stay in the division, that's for sure. Some teams around us have games in hand still, so we might yet drop from uh, P7 in the league. It's Fulham next for us, but it seems that some of those teams have dropped points as well. Scout reports for the first time, 69 to 94. Mm, he's not going to start very well, though, is he? Let's see, 64 to 86, no. It's the... The overall value that kind of gives away how good their current rating is. The higher the value, the better the player is. And he's not going to be that good. We'll give him another month just to make sure, though. Let's see if there's anything from Greece. Is the uh, no, you're not very good. No, you're not very good. No, you're not very good. Uh, no, nothing from Greece then so far. Let's see. Anything from South Africa would be a worldie if we find someone from South Africa. There hasn't been... A true standout South African player for a little while, IRL, has the uh, David Camper. Has decent potential, supposedly. We'll give him a bit of time. He's the highest value youngster we've found. 70 to 94, though he's, he is only 5 foot 5. Let's call him up and just try and get a gauge on the sort of calibre of player that we can expect for that sort of value. He's 54 rated. He's got some pace. But he's not got much else. Uh, finishing's actually his best technical stat by a mile. So, for me, that makes him a striker, really. And if we can improve his dribbling to go with it, then maybe we might be onto something. But at 5'5", five five, really, actually, there's no point, is there? He's got, to be, he's got to be like an inverted winger, doesn't he? Let's try and train his dribbling first. Go with wide winger. Try and get his dribbling... Uh, and agility and balance up and then we can concentrate on his finishing after that not sure if that's going to be worthwhile throughout the course of this save but something to start with something to start with are there any other teams that have some games in hand now, everybody's played six now and we are seventh two defeats one draw that one against everton there and then tomorrow fulham brighton leeds all played and a trip to stanford bridge which will be simmed all right uh, lofty in seventh at the minute. Can't really complain about the start to this season, can we, to be honest? That's gone very well indeed to this point. That's all for now, though. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Drop the video a like if you've enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let me know your continued feedback about the transfer ideas. And I will see you tomorrow for another one. Bye-bye.